The new ISA season is well and truly here. The first thing you want to do is rush to start filling your ISA and using your allowance. There's nothing better than the feeling of having a fresh start and new goals to hit. Now while that's great, there's a huge ISA mistake you're probably making which could be costing you up to £392,000. And no, sadly that's not some made up clickbait figure, I really wish it was. When it comes to ISAs, believe it or not, there's actually quite a lot of generic mistakes you can make. Like missing deadlines and paying into multiple ISA accounts. But this crucial one in particular is the one I think that's going to cost you more than any. So please give the next few minutes your attention as it could be very valuable to watch. I'll explain what this problem is and why it's so important and then I'll tell you how to avoid it showing you exactly what I'm doing in this situation. Exactly three weeks ago I posted this video right here. The best stocks and shares ISA for the year. A detailed comparison of the top companies which went down pretty well. Following that the next video I posted was this one. The best lifetime ISA for the year which only got about 20% of the views. This got me wondering why the lifetime ISA was so unpopular. So I explored trends which showed me that only 7% of people compared to 93% search for a lifetime ISA compared to the regular one. And in fact, while ISAs get over 100,000 searches per month, the lifetime ISA only gets 2,000. And then I thought, well, let's see what you guys are doing. And I asked the question on our community page where after over 800 responses, it shows a whopping 64% of you aren't using the lifetime ISA at all. This left me wondering if I'd failed you, is it my fault for not truly explaining just how powerful the lifetime ISA is? or is it something else? This set me on a mission to find out why the Lifetime ISA was so unpopular. And the answer is because it's bloody confusing. In fact, it's probably why people like Gemma Jackson, head of PR at Interactive Investor, are calling for the government to end the Lifetime ISA, calling it an anomaly, a halfway house between an ISA and a pension. I mean, just look at these rules. You must be over age 18, but under age 40 to open a Lifetime ISA. The government will add a 25% bonus up to £1,000 per year. Yeah. You can have a cash lifetime ISA or a stocks and shares lifetime ISA or a combination of both. You can pay into the lifetime ISA until age 50, then it's frozen until age 60, but it will keep gaining interest. I.e. your stocks within there can keep going up, you just can't pay any more in. Your lifetime ISA allowance is £4,000, which is shared with your regular ISA allowance of £20,000. So you could pay £4,000 into this and £16,000 into the ISA each tax year. You can withdraw from the lifetime ISA either for buying your first home or if you're aged over 60 or unfortunately if you're terminally ill with less than 12 months to live. There's also a hidden penalty if you don't adhere to these rules, a 25% charge which works out to be more than the bonus they give you, which helps to deter people from withdrawing. It's no wonder that people can't be bothered and would rather stick to a normal stocks and shares ISA. It's already complicated enough trying to work out your workplace pension and then think about a SIP and then a normal ISA. The lifetime ISA really just complicates the equation even further. So why have they introduced such a complicated investment device with so many complex rules? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. People suck at saving. Now, I'm not saying that's everyone, but generally it's pretty true. The majority of the population, especially the younger generation, would rather live in the now and not think about retiring at 60. I mean, it seems pretty boring, right? What they're aiming to do with the LISA is force you to either save money towards a house to help you get your first property, or give you a boost towards retirement at 60. For an average person who had a lifetime ISA until 60, and if they decided to keep it till the full retirement age, it would give such a huge boost to their pension, which would make retirement much more affordable. Especially when we're going to be facing a huge retirement crisis by the time we get there because of the sheer volume of people who aren't saving for retirement, or they just haven't been able to buy a property, it's not going to be pretty. You only have to look at how old people are now when they're buying their first property. Even mentioning the word investing or ISA to most people isn't going to resonate, mostly because of the lack of proper education and a system which is designed to keep us working as long as possible. It just shows when you talk to the amount of people who don't know there's anything beyond the cash ISA and their money is just being eaten away by inflation. Now honestly, if you're one of the people that are watching this video, you're already ahead of the curve. You're on the right path and you're interested in investing, which is great. But if you're one of the 64% of people watching this video who haven't got a lifetime ISA, the question you really want answered is, 
should I get one? This figure shocked me because after paying into your employer's workplace pension and paying into a SIP if you're a higher rate taxpayer, a lifetime ISA is the first place I would tell anyone to invest before a regular stocks and shares ISA. This tax year, the first thing I've done is pay into my lifetime ISA with Hargreaves Lansdowne before I've done anything else. And I'll continue to use their regular investing feature to fill it throughout the year, which is free to do. I had someone leave a comment which said, but why bother? And here's why you should bother and what it could cost you. So let's simplify the lifetime ISA. Forget the fact you can use it towards a property. Of course, if you're a first time buyer, do it. But let's presume you're an everyday investor. And let's forget the fact you can have it as a cash ISA. We're going to focus on the fact you can use it as an investment that you can withdraw at 60. Hopefully I speak for the majority of us when I say we're all going to be happy with a huge chunk of money at 60. And even if we plan to retire before then, we can use the remaining 16,000 per year in a regular ISA to try and do that. Since a lifetime ISA is only 20% of your yearly allowance. So let's say you'll contribute 4,000 pound per year. So you get 1,000 pound from the government for free each year. And let's take the average return of the global all cap since 2005, which is 8.4%. And for simplicity, let's just focus on the £1,000 you get for free each year. Someone aged 30 by age 50 with that compound interest would end up with £54,976 invested in the All World Fund. Now, of course, from this point on, they can't get £1,000 anymore each year because it's now frozen. But leaving that £54,000 in there would keep compounding at 8.4%. So by age 60, when you could withdraw it, it would be worth £126,972. Wow. <laughs> and remember, that's all tax-free. As it's within an ISA, you get an extra 10 years of compound interest growth. So essentially, a 30-year-old, by adding 4K into a lifetime stocks and shares ISA, rather than a regular one, would benefit by £126,000, which is pretty crazy. And to make this easier, because you're probably not 30, here's how much better you would be off by every single age. On the best end, being 18, you would be £392,000 better off. And on the worst end, being 40, you'd be just shy of £40,000 better off. If you want to see this in more detail, I'll link it down below for free on my website. Now, don't worry if that feels shocking. I'm almost 34, so looking at the 18-year-old figure is pretty depressing. And it's not meant to be a kick in the teeth to say you should have started earlier. It's more an urgency to start utilising this lifetime ISA right away. And remember, someone who is 18 may end up using it towards a house and you've likely just taken a different path and have benefited in some separate way. You may also not be facing quite the housing crisis an 18 year old may face if things don't improve. The other thing that's important to note as well is if you have a partner, you can also take advantage of their lifetime ISA too or you can just be encouraging them to start. So those numbers could literally double. I'm encouraging my partner to do this this year, so please do so too. My personal strategy is to fill my SIP with any high rate income and then my light up ISA before my stocks and shares ISA. And I really hope this video has helped highlight just how important the lifetime ISA is and encouraged you to open yours ASAP. If you want to see my comparison of the best accounts, check it out right here, or you also may find this quite interesting. And if you have any questions about how these work, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer every single question.